Hello everybody, welcome to the latest video. We're going to be talking bases today. And I've got to get this out of the way straight away. My bases, I've never really been very happy with my bases. I've always thought they've been a little bit substandard. Um, this is kind of where my Necrons ended up a little while ago. It's not bad, uh, but it's not great. They've they've moved on a little bit since then to something like this, uh, which is a little bit more variation. This one's not quite finished yet, uh, but they, they they kind of they kind of work a little bit more. Uh, I don't like the flat plane on them. I, I I like a little bit more. I would like a little bit more landscaping, as it were. So this has got a bit more, a uh, bit more kind of surface undulations, if you like, on it. And one of the things that has been bugging me for a while uh, has been urban city fight. And because I've been doing my Astra Militarum recently, and these are the city fight. The city fight colours, so I've been doing them up in uh, the city fight colour scheme. There's a slight variation of the city fight colour scheme, but definitely kind of the, like a dark blue and then the red shoulder pad. And I really wanted to nail a city fight rubble gothic Warhammer 40,000 esque base for them all. Now, there are a few things that I wanted to get, there are a few things that I like in bases, and I've never quite been able to to figure out how to do it and how to make them look good and I'm super critical of my bases <laughs> it's really is a real nightmare but um I like I like the color scheme that I've got now and there are a couple of couple of like little secret um little secret additions which have really started to push it just a fraction further and you can end up doing some quite cool stuff and the little secret which I've realized seems to make a difference is adding little bricks now i've got a big pack from major miniatures uh, which is on ebay they're 135 scale you get 900 bricks in here it's absolutely fantastic so you get a big chuck big uh, big blister of bricks and if you add them if you add them to rubble uh they instantly i think ground it in like a urban rubble destroyed derelict building area sort of battlefield uh, and i think it helps a lot and then and then of course you can start adding in li these little bits of rebar and and i beam and uh, i've got some angle line as well on some of them uh, there's a bit of angle line sticking out of this one but let's see if we can get this sort of um idea across all the models so we're going to go through and I'm going to show you how I did them. Even this little sister of battle that I did for for Shay, uh, my friend Shay on Twitch, and uh, this was done in in the same way, adding uh, a, just a couple of bricks, rubble, and then the colour scheme that we'll talk about later, uh, which I got from Fletch from Tabletop Tactics. So thank you very much to Fletcher, my friend Fletcher. And there's so the first the first thing that we're going to talk about is getting the height now it's it's really easy to get height you just add a little bit of cork or you add uh, a stone and then you stand stand the model on it that the only issue on that is that it looks like he's just standing on a stone and my challenge around that was to try to make it look like it was uh, a little bit more in situ of the hey there we go just drop all the <laughs> drop all the models and smash them all to bits uh trying to make it look a little bit more in situ and and uh, organic in terms of not just a uh, a rock sitting on the top of a uh, sitting on the top of a flat face so one of the things that i started trying to do is having some um some aspects of the base reaching out and coming out from um, and it works really well well with the rubble as well because obviously the rubble is going to be building up on things so you're going to be building up on angle iron uh, little eye beams and things like that and then these bricks uh, and then also we've scattered a few little bits of um, uh, ammo crates uh, I've spent ammo casings and uh, a couple of sandbags as well all around these so these are really cool the first point of call though is going to be using a little bit of cork to give us some height. So what we're going to do is I'm going to make a base for this guy here. So let's get down and we'll talk through all the little bits and pieces that I use to make these 
rather cool and I'm very very happy with them city fight bases and then you can even level them up and go even further so this is the this is the base for the Lord Solar and we've done uh, a similar similar kind of thing we've got plenty of plenty of bricks around and here here she is my my Lord Solar Severina who's uh, looking rather fantastic so this is going to get painted up can't wait to see this all painted up plenty of rubble around but the rubble is grounded in the uh, in the universe uh, by the addition of the bricks uh, so all these pipes and the, the angle line and everything it gets grounded a little bit more it looks a bit more realistic just with the addition of the bricks uh, same with things like this there we go so artillery battery plenty of sandbags which are really easy to do these are just milliput and uh, plenty of bricks so that you know that uh, it is an urban city fight area. Right, let's get down to business and we'll sort this out. Let's go. My nemesis city fight bases, we're going to tackle it. We're going to get them all sorted. Um, I could, I, I probably shouldn't go down this line of thought, but I could make them, because they're not really... 40k they haven't got a, a 40k vibe to them really they're just at the moment they're just kind of city fight rubble bases you could make them a little bit more gothic ruins uh, a bit more 40k grounded if you like just grab if you could grab some of the uh, the the games workshop uh, gothic ruin kit and you could kind of scatter some of those little bits around and, and cut off uh, cut up little bits of the rebar and the, the wall sections and things and just uh, just put those onto some of the larger larger bases but anyway th this is this is absolutely fine for for the infantry and uh, it's nice and simple as well and it's cheap so uh, we need to add some height straight away as i've been saying i'm going to use some cork you could you could very easily use milliput it's just cork is a bit easier just to kind of add on and tear up and make make into the um uh, make, make the right size uh, and also you're not wasting you're not wasting milliput you're not wasting quantities of milliput trying to trying to mix up exactly the amount that you need so you could add a blob of uh, you could add a blob of milliput but i'm just using cork um, and that was some super glue activator as well uh, it's really easy and simple to get hold of on amazon i'll probably put a link down down uh, in the description if you want it it just means that the super glue super glue cures super quick now, just fitting on and kind of mock uh, mock fitting uh, to find out where we need to make some areas for the feet to sit. Um, the cork itself, you've got to be very careful using cork because you, you, the areas of cork which are fine are the bits that you're tearing off. Uh, so they create kind of rubble areas uh, and texture which you can hide when you're painting the 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 challenge is and which is also why i like i quite like using this thick stuff and then tearing it on in half if you like and cutting down the center the challenge is when you have the flat face of the cork um you've then got to disguise that now i'm making a flat face of this cork here just so that it's where it's where the foot can sit but you'll notice that every everywhere else every other surface of the cork is is torn and, and textured and ripped up so that's the that's the bit that we need to uh, play around with and, and keep that texture around so that it does basically so it doesn't look like cork right the magic i honestly i had this i don't know why <laughs> i don't know where i had the idea but uh, yeah i grabbed some of these and then instantly they were so cool now this is the these are all the uh, different little bits of rebar and plastic strut that you can get. You can get this uh, pretty much everywhere. I think I got this stuff off eBay. Um, you can also get it from uh, the, the same company I get my glue from, Slater's in uh, Matlock in Derby. But uh, just tear off some bits. Uh, you'll notice that I cut half and then kind of rip the other half, and that uh, has a little bit. It gives the the rebar or the I-beam or whatever it is that you're using, it gives it a bit of a... A battered look at the end of it, and I'm just going to section these and place them on. So this is where we're kind of going to tear off little bits on the end to make it look like it's it's battered and ruined, uh, war torn, 
bit of rebar that's been exploded out of the building or something. Anyway, just just tear it up. And that, so these are going to. Uh, if you if you create a tall base, the issue that you have is then what do you do with the sides of that base? Uh, so if you think about when you're making uh, like a grassy mound or something, if you want a, a higher base, then you're going to cover it with grass. Well, he's just standing on like a, a random a random mound of grass. Um, and that's the same issue with, with the city fight bases and the rubble bases. He's just going to stand on a, a like just a random bit of rubble. Whereas what I'm trying to do is have the surface of the rubble that he's standing on be um be like the top surface as you're walking around and then coming out of the bottom and coming out of the sides of that are all the little bits which the rubble is building up upon uh so that, that anyway it's it's really difficult to explain it was it was always my issue that if if you want a higher base then what do you do with the sides of the base um and and this is this is where i'm i'm getting the little bit of disguise if you like uh, on from from the base as and onto the base so we've got these little bits of rebar uh, this angle iron plastic strut uh, angle them out so that they're sticking out of the uh, sticking out of the rubble um, and then we can uh, build up uh, around it with some rubble and some sand and some texture paste and uh, all the little sneaky things like the bricks and stuff like that so again just some activators just to speed up the process um, yeah, super glue is super glue is really really quick when you're doing bases like this because it does literally just speed up the process. There's one part where I use some uh, PVA glue later on, but uh, if you're building the building the parts, uh, building the bases on on mass, then you can just leave them all to to kind of set overnight. One thing I will say is that if you're using super glue activator and super glue, please use it in a, vent in a ventilated environment. Uh, I get a bit of a <laughs> bit of a runny nose after I build all these, so. Texture paste, texture paint, texture paste. And if you are just wanting texture paste uh, and a texture surface for your bases, grab this Vallejo stuff. It's I think it's ten pounds for a massive tub. Uh, I think this tub I've, I've talked about it before in 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 videos. I think this this tub I've done about four armies with, and it's still half 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 um, half full. Uh, not half empty, half full. <laughs> so the the Games Workshop stuff. The only Games Workshop texture paste I use is the Agrilan Earth. Agrilan Earth is the, is the crackle paint. The Games Workshop crackle paint is fantastic. The texture paint is um, too expensive for the quantity that you get. So this is absolutely brilliant. It's just sanding paint. But it's got a little bit of tack to it as well. So it does glue. Um, so as you're applying it. Um, I'm, I'm, it's, this is just a, a, a <laughs> it's a paint handle which I stuck in a pencil sharpener, so I've got a nice pointy, <laughs> I've got a nice pointy um, uh, applicator to to put all this stuff on. So if, slosh it on, uh, be quite liberal with it. Uh, try not to get it on the rebar too much. It is also water soluble, so you'll see later we'll get some some water on a brush and kind of manipulate it and move it around and soften some of the edges and things. But uh, yeah, it's fantastic, this stuff. I use it all over the place. Um, and you can also get it in different colours as well. So my Necrons are in a in a redder, uh, a redder orangey Martian uh, colour, which is great. But yeah, as, as I say, yeah, this, is, uh, this has got some sort of gluing uh, capacity to it as well so uh, we can scatter and, and uh, add some um, bricks straight into it uh, if you are going to add bricks into it and, and slightly larger things like skulls just make sure that it's a little bit thicker where you want to apply the skull so this is just a brush uh, it's a very wet brush and it just allows you to be a little bit more accurate in where you're placing it and then obviously uh, and you can also soften and blend in the uh, the, the texture paste around the cork as well. I'm leaving the cork where he's going to stand. I'm going to I'm leaving that just that it's bare cork. Um, you can and I have done. You can glue models onto the bases with this as well. Um, it, it, it's it holds the models fine as long as they're not too big. 
um, as, as soon as they got as soon as they start getting a little bit larger um, or you're handling them a lot what you can do is glue the base uh, glue the models on with this paste so that the model is grounded in the environment and then as once it's dried like the next day just tear the model off because it you can you can pull it off quite easily then add a little bit of super glue underneath it and put it back on where it came from and then it will be completely invisible and the model will still be grounded in the paste uh, it's quite a, quite a good way of doing it so the, these bricks are fantastic. I don't know what he's made them out of. I genuinely do not know what he's made them out of. But they've got some fibrous like matting running through them all, uh, which is really interesting. Uh, I don't know what they are, but they all, they snap really easily. You can kind of crack them and uh, and and batter them up a little bit. Um, but you'll see that as I pull some of them out, uh, they're, 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 they tend to get stuck together a little bit uh, with this fiber. Uh, matting between them two. There we go. You see, so, but you can just tear them apart, add them to the base, push them into the push them into the texture paste, and uh, it is it is set and ready. Um, again, just try and be as random as you can. I know the human mind doesn't like doing things randomly. Uh, I mean, that's a, an incredible right angle there with two two bricks, uh, and this is also how easy they can snap into like that. And uh, another great little use. Uh, if you are going to snap them in two, try and have the the snapped part of the brick being the open um, uh, being the open edge if you like. So put the square edge into the into the texture paste and have the broken edge sticking out. Just adds a little bit more interest and give a bit more a bit more um, detail to the to the brick as you're adding it on. And uh, there he is. So he's sitting there quite well. His right foot uh, looks like it's going to sit on top of this brick rather well, so I'm just flattening that brick out, uh, make a flat surface so that he can glue on afterwards. Uh, I'm I'm so picky, like I say, I'm I'm so critical of my bases. I don't think my bases are very good at all. I'm trying really hard to level them up. Um, I, I see some people's bases, like Fletcher from Tabletop Tactics, um, my friend Ash uh, at Games Workshop. That um, he's one of the army. Um, diorama builders uh, like th their bases are so cool and mine are in comparison I think mine are terrible anyway uh, I, I do like these so this is some um, I can't remember what it's called it's, it's just grey aggregate from rival crafts uh, it's, it's on there it's on their aggregate range um, so I'm just dropping in you you saw me uh, just shake it at the beginning and if you shake it, it separates all the aggregates out. So you've got the fine stuff on one side and then the heavier stuff on the other side. So you pick up the heavy stuff first, scatter a few larger stones on, and then you can grab like a big finger full of the fine stuff uh, and scatter it around as well. Uh, knock off any excess and then leave that to dry. Push any of the larger ones in just so that they've got a bit more purchase on the texture paste as well. Shake any off, and uh, that's that's already looking like a pretty cool base, uh, in my opinion. Now the last last little bit that we're going to add. Come on, there we go. So this is just some plastic rod. Um, it's the same same stuff as the the angle line and the eye beam. It's just some uh, plastic uh, plastic rod, and uh, all I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off small sections. Snap, snap, snap. I think, I'm, I think I do four on this one. You can cut off as many as you like. Uh, <laughs> try not to ping them like that. Um, cut off cut off some small sections. They're just going to represent some some spent ammo casings on the bases. Great way to add, add, uh, add a little bit of extra detail onto bases like this and uh, make it so that it's not just like a... Um, it's not a like a derelict building. It's a... It's a battleground because uh, I've got some spent ammo casings on there. It helps anyway, I think anyway. So, uh, in the same way as my painting, my painting I like to build up with lots of little details, and I'm trying uh, I'm trying to do that with my bases as well. So, trying to add lots of little details and build up, and uh, have have some interest across the whole base. So, this is just a one of those little extra bits. Uh, scatter them around again. Uh, I, I try to find like areas where I think they would naturally land and also areas which make, might make the front of the base look a bit more interesting. You'll notice that all the interesting stuff is happening on the front of the base. The back of the base is just 
it's just got texture on it. It's just got sand on it. There's, there's, there, I don't even think there was a brick on there. Um, so I always try and uh, it's the same when you paint as well. I always try and have a bit more focus on the front of the base when uh, when we're painting. Uh, and and um, yeah, that that applies to the building as well. So try and have uh, try and have a focus focal point on the front of the base. Now this is PVA glue uh, and matte varnish, so it's 50-50 PVA glue and matte varnish, uh, and then a big, big, uh, healthy do dousing of uh, airbrush flow improver from Vallejo. It just softens. It's the same, same, same principle as adding um, a washing up liquid. It just lowers the surface tension. So. Uh, I just didn't have any washing up liquid when I made it and I do have some airbrush flow improver on the desk so I just had some flow improver and this just this is um, the base is already set so all the texture paste is already set and now I'm just giving it a, a liberal dosing of this just to um, secure everything down and it's not going to fall off just to be extra extra careful and uh, that will take a little while to bleh, take a little while to dry so leave it overnight, come back the next day, and uh, we get to some painting. So, uh, like I say, I've got to thank uh, Fletch from um, Tabletop Tactics for the for the recipe for the base. Uh, I, <laughs> again, I still don't think it looks as good as his, but uh, it's it's uh, it's pretty cool. So uh, I, I forget what what brown that one was. Uh, where is it? It is flat earth. So this is the first first coat. Uh, is flat earth. I would probably, if I was going to do this again, I would probably um, um, prime it black as well, just to get a bit more of shadow in some of the recesses. But you'll see as we as we go on, we get uh, very very bright anyway. So uh, that's a, a very liberal all over coat of uh, of flat earth, uh, and then we're doing a highlight of ochre brown now. When I'm when I'm airbrushing, you can a hundred percent do this with a dry brush as well. Um, just make sure you're not taking too much of the. Uh, don't dry. Basically, don't dry the dry brush on a. A, a tissue. Don't dry it on a tissue because you're pulling the the medium out of the paint, and that's where it ends up looking chalky. So when you're dry brushing, you, like use a a, um, a piece of paper or a bit of. Um, Bit of plastic or something to get to get to, to get the most of. Anyway, I'm using an airbrush, and while I'm when I'm doing this, I'm going very from a from a top, uh, right from a top on uh, on all the layers, so that we're still leaving some detail and shadow. Uh, you can see particularly on the back there, and I'm also focusing very much on the <laughs> the little pipette that I use for the for the thinner in the airbrush, uh, focusing on the front of the the base. So I want the front of the base to be a little bit lighter and drawing focus and then we can, we can have some shadow and some depth as it goes further back and where obviously where the model lands it uh, stands it's going to be a little bit darker as well. So that was Carrick Stone. That's the second highlight. Final highlight is Ivory. Now you have to be a little bit don't don't, don't make this highlight too if you are if you are if you are airbrushing. Don't make this highlight too thin because you don't want it to run into some of the recesses. You want this one to sit on the tops. Um, so arguably this would be perfect if you were going to kind of dry brush over the top of this one or over brush it if you like. But this is how I uh, this is how I do, uh, mix my airbrushing. So that was a couple of drops of thinner in with a pipette. Get a brush of, um, brush of the paint and uh, mix it in. And so that allows me to be very accurate on how much I want and what uh, what consistency I uh, I need the paint to be. And this is just going to be very much on the top, and we're focusing on uh, some of the areas that we want to be much lighter and draw focus. So you can see everything at the front, uh, and then it was just kind of a, a scatter at the back just to throw some highlights in there. But the, the, trying to um, yeah, we're just having some focus on the front of the front of the base, 
And I, I know this is a very long, very long video just on how to paint and make, build a base, but I really am trying to kind of level up my basing a little bit, so I wanted to put some effort in. And I thought it would be quite cool just to show you, you guys the whole process uh, and also try and talk through the whole process as well. I thought it would be quite interesting. So the rebar, this is a, a running theme on all of my Astra Militarum and, and uh, Imperial Guard stuff. All the all the metal on my models is very much um, sort of non-metallic, but more, more that it's just rusty. <laughs> so the whole thing, like anything, like if you look at the dozer blade on some of my Layman Rust conversions, they are all kind of brown and rusty as well. So... Rhinox hide on any of the rebar, any of the I-beam, uh, any metal work that's sticking out of the base. And then once that's dry, we're going to add some very simple rust to it as well. So scrag brown, water down some scrag brown and slosh in some scrag brown into the recesses as well. Uh, add some dots to the surfaces. And that will, uh, once it's dry and you get like the little watermarks as well, the watermarks uh, look really good um, for contextualized rust as it's been raining and some water has run some rust out of the way and things like that so yeah it was a great great way of uh, adding rust uh, or you can just use the dirty down rust <laughs> which we did on the the gallo dark terrain so yeah there we go simple simple uh, rebar and rusty rebar now this is optional you don't have to do this but like i say i'm trying to level up i'm trying to get better this is uh, a, a step that um, Fletcher did as well. This is some deathcore drab and some burnt umber. And this is just adding um, a, a little variety of, of color and uh, it kind of represents some, some moss or some extra dirt, which is uh, landing on some of the areas, just scatters it around. Um, but then to pull everything together, we're gonna get some oil paint and we're going to wash all the way over. Now, of course, of course, I'm using Bob Ross thinner, odorless Bob Ross thinner. If it's if if Bob Ross can't make my bases better, then, uh, <laughs> then I'm screwed. So add a little bit of thinner. Again, I've, I've got you can get you can, those pipettes. You can get like fifty of those pipettes for a pound or something on eBay. So grab yourself some pipettes. It makes everything so much easier. Uh, when you're applying water to things, um, when you're putting thinners in airbrushes or thinners in little pots like this for your, for your oil washers, pipettes are amazing. Uh, and dirt, dirt, dirt cheap, absolute dirt cheap. So mix it up. Uh, I, you want this to be thicker than you think. Um, let's put it that way. Um, so if you are, if if it goes too thin, you'll see that I didn't apply that, I didn't put that many drops of thinner in here and actually as I'm going around and applying it you'll notice that I go to the the blob of oil which is in the because I haven't quite mixed all of it in there's a little there's a there's a uh, quite a heavy there it is you can just see it in the bottom there there's quite a heavy chunk uh, so this is a little bit thin so as you're applying it there you go so there's the extra extra bit of oil that I'm adding in but uh, it just it just kind of pulls everything together now one of the interesting things about this actually is that it's brown uh, and rubble bases as soon as you think of like an urban rubble base you think gray but actually brown works much better and i like uh it's another running theme on all my bases all my bases seem to be a warmer base like my necrons i really like my orangey martian red necron bases and I'm doing the Gallo Dark bases as well, the Into the Dark uh, boarding action bases. There's a video coming for those, and they are also a very warm kind of base. I kind of like the ready tones on bases. I think it sets the models off really, really well. So this is, I, I found that quite interesting, actually, that I was trying to think in my head how to do urban rubble bases. And I was like, well, it's going to be kind of grey, and maybe you can throw a little bit of kind of rust in there. But no, it's all, <laughs> it's all brown. Uh, right, magic super glue again. Uh, I ended up very, very nearly putting too much on there, so I do touch that to a little bit of plastic just to get some excess off. And then Mr. Voxcaster for my command squad just sits very comfortably on the top there with his right foot on a brick. 
he's looking cool. The only thing I have done um, that I didn't record is I've just painted some uh, the spent ammo casing silver. You can see them glistening there. So they've just got, they've just had a coat of silver. And then the final little addition, which is fantastic and ties everything together, is some Vallejo Pigments Light Sienna. Um, Rival Crafts, again, they do the same same tone as well. Rival Craft Pigments are arguably better, but I just don't have that tone in, in them. Um, so I, uh, I, I use the Vallejo ones. A dry brush, make sure the brush is dry. Make sure the base is dry. Oh, my God. Uh, if anything is wet, then it turns into... Uh, you can do... Um, pigment washes. Uh, I've done plenty of plenty of cool pigment washes, but this you definitely want everything to be dry. Uh, the base has also had a quick coat of matte varnish as well, just to seal in the oil. But literally, grab a grab a brush of it, scrub it in. Um, you can see little clouds of dust um, coming out occasionally when you when you have a, a bit too much on your brush. Like that is a little bit too much. So as I'm scrubbing in, you might see little clouds appear and go away so uh, try not to add too much at a time but just building it up um, th there isn't really any try to add it here kind of rules um, I just try and build it up uh, in, in any way that might look cool try and keep it away from some of the darkest recesses because it will lift those up a little bit uh, and then um, drop it onto the feet as well so that the feet end up getting a little bit grounded. I have the, the feet on all my Astra Militarum stuff are going to be, um, they've got a black boot on. So I've just painted these boots black. And there we go. I gave them, gave, yeah, I gave the coats, uh, the boots a coat of uh, Vallejo model color black, which is a nice kind of matte black. And then I can do the feet while I've got the pigment powders out and then I'll paint the model at a later date but <laughs> I thought I'd definitely try and get the feet in. Uh, knock any excess off, give it a quick blow if you need to, don't don't, don't blow with the uh, with the pot open otherwise you'll get it all over the place. But there is the finished city fight. I'm, I'm really liking these, they're really cool. Here are the final ones. Uh, yes I have had a haircut. This is a few days later. <laughs> I've done I've done a few little bits, um, but yeah. So here are here are the final city fight rebels. I, I I really like them. I think they tie in very very well. I think they look great. Um, and I thought I would show you a few more variations, uh, particularly this one, uh, which is um, like the the finished painting. Uh, well, nearly finished painting. I've got a lot to paint. <laughs> I've got a lot of imperial guard to paint. Okay. Uh, so I am I am kind of working through them uh, as and, as and when I can, uh, but I think I think they I think they look really really good. Uh, you can you can kind of ask why they are wearing uh, camo which isn't exactly camouflaged in a in a in a city fight terrain which looks like that. But hey, I don't care. I think it looks great. Uh, it's really striking, really contrasting, and uh, yeah, I think on mass a whole army of that I think will look great. And I couldn't not show you how well this one's come out. I'm quite proud of this one. I think this one looks really good. Uh, maybe it needs a little bit more um, pastel, um, a little bit more pigment uh, around this area. But then after all, that is where Severina, Lord Solar Severina, that is where she's going to stand anyway. So maybe she can disguise that. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think they've all... All come out really well. Um, I'm very, very pleased with them. And hopefully this will be the start of my journey of levelling up my basing just a little bit. So if you have any ideas, if you have any tips of really kind of pushing my basing. Um, my Golden Demon base for Glorfindel last year was really good. I really liked that one. I thought that was great. I've got a few more to do. Uh, I have Glorfindel for this Golden Demon as well. So he'll have to have a really nice one. I've got a couple of other... Um, entries as well which I'm working on which will need some nice bases but uh, yeah I think just building up the levels uh, the layers of detail as you go and, and adding in more and more and more I think it would be really cool I think it works I think it works anyway hopefully that has been interesting to you all guys I'm sorry it's taken so long um, uh, yeah I, I, I didn't intend the video to be quite quite this long uh, but hopefully You'll have found some interesting tidbits across the uh, across the entire video. If you have, please let me know what your favourite part of the video was. 
And if you have a go and do some yourself, please, please, please tag me and uh, share them up on Instagram or something, or even on my Discord. Um, and as always, thank you very, very much for uh, the uh, Patreon and Twitch subscribers. I'm on Twitch four, uh, three or four times a week, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday usually, uh, and then a Saturday as well if there's something that we're working on. We are doing boarding actions paint along this month, all this month on Saturdays. So, uh, well, this month as time of filming. So if you are working on any boarding parties, then pop in and, and share them with us. And uh, thank you very much, everybody. Take care, and I will see you all later. Have a great weekend. Let's get fighting over some city fights. I need to make it. You almost want to make an entire board now just to see them all sitting there. Anyway, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> right. Great. Thanks very much, everybody. Take care. I'm going to go and make some food. I've got some chilli. I'm going to make some chilli. Take care, everybody. See you later. Bye-bye.